here we go. So let's talk about classical saxophone a little bit, because today I got something very special. This Creston Sonata for tenor saxophone. Why are there so many great classical saxophone pieces written for alto and not the tenor? When it comes to classical saxophone, to me, there's like two schools. There's the soloist concept, and then there's the ensemble concept. And because of the history of the saxophone, the inherent nature of the sound of the saxophone, it's necessary to bury the saxophone in the mix, so to speak. Our instrument is very young, 180 year old instrument. So much of the music that's written for the classical genre was written before our instrument was made. So a lot of that stuff, our instrument basically winds up doubling other instruments and gets buried in the mix because that timbre is just going to stand out from what was intended from the composer. But I think there should be a third concept, which is much more of an approach to the music and less to the idea of what the saxophone is supposed to sound like. And I think that no other saxophone really gets shafted than the tenor. Tenor saxophone in classical music is really the ugly duckling is just kind of an outcast in that regard. And mainly, I think, because no one knows what this thing is really supposed to sound like. Do we make it sound like a saxophone? And now, oh, it sounds like jazz because it's a saxophone. Or is it standing out too much? If we bear it in the mix, then what's the point of having it? The Crescent Sonata is definitely that collegiate level test of one's might in that regard. I don't know what I'm really going to do with this. I mean, am I going to go out and perform it in front of people and this kind of thing? I mean, I'm a jazz player, even though, even though I love classical music and technically I am a classical saxophone player also, but in terms of performance and doing gigs and stuff like that, I'm at a point now where I just want to have the most fun with the greatest amount of dexterity over this instrument possible. So let's take a look at how I've been practicing the Creston Sonata on tenor. Also, I'm going to go over this Kaizen concept that I've been talking about in my intros to my videos, which is basically just a slow, methodical way of approaching a problem so that you always have good quality. I like to have this little philosophy that I attach to it. That's pretty much this. Play it slow enough to get it right the first time. Practice makes perfect. You want to practice playing it correctly. If you practice it wrong over and over again, you're going to be perfect at playing it wrong. All right, so let's take a short break and then let's get to playing this thing. So with this piece of music, I am reading the alto part and I'm just sight transposing it. Eventually, I'm gonna just transpose this thing for tenor, so it's just a lot easier to read because that is absolutely by far the most difficult thing. I forgot to tell you, I'm using that $21 um, Amazon mouthpiece that I had plated with a BG ligature here and jazz reads. Nice diminished lick there. <laughs> I 
I have my Altissimo book for tenor saxophone available as a digital purchase. I'll put a link in the description below, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really focusing on playing the Altissimo register like it's a regular part of the saxophone. And stuff like this, just classical saxophone music for alto, is fantastic at just bringing you back to the fundamentals of playing the saxophone. Because we take a lot of liberties in jazz and improvisation oriented music. So it's a nice way to ground yourself and really hammer down the fundamentals. Aside from playing scales and arpeggios and that kind of stuff, get a piece of music and it's something that's familiar but totally unfamiliar under the fingers. Okay, I've been working at it a little bit. I'm only gonna do like this first half, probably for like a month every day of just like slowly, slow walking myself through this thing. But it's doing stuff that as a jazz player, I never ever think about doing. Like decrescendoing as I'm going into the altissimo register. How often do we ever do that? Almost never, ever do we do that. Also, some of the altissimo to the natural range, it's the same fingering. So it's really embouchure control, air support, all of that stuff in ways that I never think to play this way when I'm doing jazz stuff. Um, <laughs> okay. When I was on ships, I had to have alto and tenor, but unfortunately, because of the company I worked for, I wound up having to sell my alto. So I was just sight reading a lot of stuff on tenor. I was sight reading a lot of alto stuff on tenor. And it would be very apparent to me why music notation needs to be correct. Because, uh, wow, this one, man, there's like sharps going in the wrong direction. It, it's just, it's a nightmare to transpose this thing. Okay. But um, that's where I'm at right now. In my own world of what a classical tenor saxophone is supposed to sound like, it's definitely going to be in that third concept of sound, which is much, much more on individual sound based on this is what this instrument is supposed to sound like. Imagine this is the first time you hear Latin jazz and Stan Getz together. In your mind, boom, it just locks in that this is what a tenor saxophone sounds like in this particular style of music. But it is extraordinarily limiting to have tenor saxophone only sound one particular type of way. Classical music is humongous. Classical saxophone is really just a subset of classical music, but as a learned classical saxophonist, it, it's a much larger category for us as saxophonists, but really the push to really get this instrument much more popular in the classical genre is, is one of my personal goals with what it is that I'm trying to do. Along with jazz and rock and funk and all of that, and altissimo and articulation and writing songs, which brings me to this thing. All it really takes is someone to write a song that's a hit, that has a unique type of classical sound on this instrument. And then everybody's gonna wanna do it, right? So, okay, let's move on and let's take a look at this song, all right? Mm -hmm. 